So if you're struggling to mark your APIs and you can't actually figure out the right tool for you to mark and create fake APIs when you're developing, well, this awesome tool and library is actually right for you. So if you want to create like an application like this that uses a fake RESTful API to like fetch fake data in here and actually work with it and actually make it useful while you're developing. Well, let's see how you can use this awesome tool to create fake and mark RESTful APIs and ship the marks right with your code base. So if you have been using Postman or any other sort of application to mark your own APIs and, and do development in the meantime, and I think it's actually the time to switch to something brand new and awesome instead of Postman, which is the Mock Service Worker or the MSW. So the Mock Service Worker is actually a really awesome tool. I've been using it for like ever now and just marking my APIs and doing a bunch of bunch of cool stuff. This tool actually allows you to mark your APIs using code. So instead of using going through the graphical stuff, learning something new, learning new application, how to use it, how to mark it, how to share it with your team, you no longer need to do that. You just mark it with a single couple of lines of code as you would do with Express or anything alongside your application. You go Alongside your front end code, and you can share that code. Obviously, the code base is going to be there. The new mocks are going to live alongside the new code base, so any team member can literally access that in seconds. And that can make sure to all of you, all of the team members use the same mock. So for example, to mock some like sort of API in Postman, what you need to go through like mock servers, you create like a mock server. So for example, this is our current mock server in here. And you go ahead inside of that, actually go ahead and create new requests. So for example, I put like a new request in here, my collection. So this is actually the products request. And this is actually what I want to return. So you go and create an example out of this. So you just do like add an example, and it can go ahead and add me an example in here. So for example, the example I want to have like for the products in here to return. So this is actually the default one, I just provide it with you know, like whatever you want to be returned in here, which is a little bit kind of confusing, because you don't exactly get it because you can do the same request, and you have to set an example at the same time, it has always been confusing for me for postman, I'm not sure if you guys as well have like the same issue with like how postman mocks APIs, it could have just been a lot easier. But for me, I'm not a big fan of it, it just makes it super hard. So here you put your sample, like response, response, what is going to be response for like the mock API. And here, if you go inside of this, you do send a request, it's actually going to go ahead and return your default data. And you can basically go back in here. And you can use this, this postman kind of mock URL, which isn't local, it's like something hosted in postman and stuff like that. I'm, I'm really not a big fan of it. And it's kind of like makes it a little bit harder to mock and, and if you don't have internet and all the all the crazy stuff that goes behind it. But if you're using the MSW or the mock service worker here, you can easily mock the APIs and basically use the same URL of your current development application, which currently in here, I'm using Next.js with React, obviously, and I basically use localhost, which is the same URL that the Next.js is actually the Next.js application is actually running on. And I just do like products in here, which I'm already mocking out and I can do get service side props. And that would work absolutely fine. If you like go inside of that and refresh the page, it's actually going to return, it's going to fetch the product for me and just get them all in here absolutely working fine. So to get started with mock service, you first need to install this and actually integrate with your current application. So it depends on the framework or what you're basically using. So for example, in here, after installing this one, basically, it's pre configured for the create react app. So if you're using the CRA or create react app in here, you can easily have this installed as well as actually for the same for the other stuff. So if you go to the integrate in here, for example, and you go to browser, here, you will find different templates for Next.js, Gatsby, Vue.js, Vilt, many, many more. So just gonna actually go ahead and show you all that what you need to do and actually how to make the mock service actually worker install with Next.js and working absolutely fine. Also, if you head to the examples in here, you'll basically find all the examples in here like repositories. So if we go to Next.js, it's going to take me to the GitHub repo that has this one. And I can use this template and set up a new Next.js application using this one. So you can do your own create next up and I provide with the MSW. So the mock service worker setup is actually very easy. So there's actually two setups, one for the browser mocking and one for the server because your application basically is going to be running on both sides. So sometimes it's going to run on the actual browser where you know, most applications going to be running or in the Node.js, if you're just doing any JS testing or testing in general, obviously, that's going to be running in Node.js. So you need to also provide those mocks in a server kind of like or a Node.js kind of handler. So all your mocks and API mocking here is going to live inside of this mocks folder. And you can basically mock whatever. So for example, here, I created an API folder to, you know, put all 
all the APIs I'm going to be mocking inside of that for loop. So for example, in here for mocking the products and getting products the same way we did in Postman, it's pretty simple. So what you're doing here is actually import the REST API in here or the REST handler. And here you can basically use all the methods that you can. For example, you can do REST, you can do post, all, delete, head, options, patch, and so on and so forth. So you can mock any HTTP method in here and actually return whatever response. And actually, if you're familiar with ExpressJS, this basically has the same kind of API and the look and feel to ExpressJS. So first you provide what is the endpoint in here, you can provide whatever endpoint you want. And the second one is actually the callback that has res request response and the current contacts. And here you can do basically whatever you want. So you can just fetch filter the products and go through all of those. And last but not least, what you do is actually return a response, you do for example, oh, context, I want to return a JSON. And these are actually the JSON I'm going to return in. So it's actually the object I'm going to return, I'm going to return products and filtered products. And this will return a JSON with the current products. And inside of your application here, where the mocks are actually running, you can use this same API that you tried to mock. And preferably, let's make this API because when you're mocking your APIs, you're basically mocking like a RESTful API or a backend API that is still in development or not ready yet. So always make sure you actually your mocks and your URLs in here match as much as you could to the real APIs because later on when you deploy and everything when the real APIs are ready, you don't need to do a lot of changes in the code, you don't need to change the actual URL in here, you had for development. And we were also calling this for the search. So whenever the user searches for a product, we're just calling the same API we had before we go through products and we put the new query in here new query parameter, and you can do search stem and category, the same thing when a category changes. So you can handle all of these. So if you jump back, so if you jump back to the mock API in here, as close in here, we are actually handling the request URL and we grabbing the search parameters or grabbing the actual query parameters in here, which are like the search and the category and we're using them in here to filter whatever needed. So we're actually filtering the products depending on the search and depending on the category. So for example, if you search for a project, like for example, oh, I want to search for a pizza, there you go, as you in here, the request is made every single time we do our search, as you see, it's searching products, it doing a request to localhost 333 products, which is where our mock is actually running and actually where Working absolutely fine. So, for example, if we get a preview in here, it's actually returning the product, it's taking the query parameters in here, it's working fine. And the same thing would happen for if we do like categories in here, as you see, it's doing the same request in here. And the mocks are just running absolutely fine as if we were running on an actual real server. Now, if you want to mock a more complicated scenario where you need to like register and log in and like authenticate users, you can do that the same thing using mock service worker as well. So, for example, in here, we want to mock the register. So for example, in here, when I mock the register in here, we do the same thing. So we do rest, we're going to mock and post HTTP request to forward slash register in here. And as creation here, I can go ahead and do like grab the email, like full name and password from the request JSON body, which is going to be sent on the on the post body, obviously. And here I'm going to actually go ahead and do everything I want. So I can do use local storage for just for storing this mock data and it's actually really, really great for testing. So I can do like JSON parse and I can get the item in here, I can figure out Oh, there's actually an existing user or not, I check if that if not, I'm going to go ahead and add a new user, I push the new user, set the item on the local storage in here. So I want to always make sure to save the users on local storage, which is going to be acting like a database, you can use like a local database, even like a like a SQLite or something that would be perfect match, but also using the local storage will be easy as well. And eventually just returning Oh, you have registered successfully. The same thing goes for the login in here, we have login, get email and password, we parse the login, and we find an email user on the local storage in here. So if it does actually find a user on the local storage by you know getting all the users array in here, we good. Otherwise, we just return it oh, in current email or password in here, just like, you know, just a simple thing, we try to return some token, but even though it's not a valid token, you can just mock this one, and you can just use it for testing purposes. So for example, if we try to register in here using our form in here that uses the API that we just mocked out using mock service worker, we're just going to do go ahead and register as Chris in here, thanks for registering. If you look at the request that was made, actually has been made, you know, like to the register mock API returns 200. Uh, we've got a payload in here and we got a message, the same message we just mocked. So that works absolutely fine. And if you quickly check the application in here and check local storage, there you go. If you check like the users array in here, there you go, we've got the users array, those are all like the same, there's actually some simple password in here, like Alex mail and the password we've put and you can use local storage in here that can be basically acting as a real database. And now if you try to log in using the routes, so change to login in here, I go ahead and log in it says, Oh, welcome back, boss, the request 
request in here was successful and actually returns the token you've actually had and actually send it to the request or the login route. And actually the mock service worker actually has more into it. That is actually a bunch of bunch of awesome stuff you can go through like oh transforming or using middlewares or basically using GraphQL in here if you want to like use GraphQL instead of RESTful APIs or for like recipes in here and actually more advanced stuff you can deal with cookies and how you can set cookies from the mock like service worker using it with a CDN using like HTTPS mountain binary responses for like images and, and PDF like responses I mean you can mock literally anything and all of those are going to live inside of your code and going to be used like alongside all of that and just going to work absolutely fine. And what I really like about the mock service worker is actually you don't need to run a separate server or something. It's going to run alongside your development server, for example, next JSON here. So whenever you do like yarn, um, dev in here, it's just going to work absolutely fine. It's just going to work and start the server alongside that one. Also, which is absolutely mind blowing is actually when you try to use test in here, you don't need to mock any APIs, you don't need to mock any responses, you just use it right away. So for example, if you're using Jest, so for example, in here, if you're using Jest with like React testing library to test your components and like, oh, render something and expect that to be uh, working fine, you don't need to go through like, oh, before each one, I just go ahead and spy on the fetch in here and, and like, all the stuff in here, mock, reset a mock, and so on and so forth, or like how the old ugly way you would do it. It's actually, oh, I want to fetch the here, and on the JSON response, I'm going to go ahead and mock like a, a resolved array function in here, mock a promise. It's very ugly, isn't it? But now with mock service worker, because it runs alongside that one, and because it has a server implementation that runs in Node.js, now all of these actually working absolutely fine. So all I got to do is actually, oh, call, for example, get service side props, which is, you know, like what's going to go ahead and do the actual fetching for me. Um, I'm using in here Axios instead of fetch because fetch you need to do a polyfills and a lot of stuff. I'm not a big fan of that. So I would rather use Axios for this. You can use fetch, you can use the polyfill. That's not an issue. And this is actually going to be working fine. The API is going to still be called fine and you're not going to lose anything. So here it's going to get the response fine. It's going to work absolutely fine. So if we try to go ahead and do yarn the test in here or like basically run the test, it's going to work fine. And both of the tests are actually going to be running fine with no issues. You see two passed. I have like all the data in here is I'm just doing a console log. I don't think if I can get up in there, but both of the tests in here are just working fine. I'm getting all the products back and yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed and hope you guys actually like the mock service worker. I absolutely enjoy it. I can't like live without this awesome tool in my projects. I literally use it everywhere to mock my APIs and whatever I need and like a mock top API. So see you guys in the next one.